Good morning. Thank you for joining us and attending the Pivoting Your Business webinar with Melanie Deal from Melanie & Co. Marketing Collective. Throughout this pandemic, BBB will pro be providing you pertinent informational webinars that will help guide your business through this pandemic. You can find a running list of the webinars on bbbevents.org. We will also be sending out each recording to all accredited businesses, so you will be able to reference this, reference this information at your convenience. Please continue to be on the lookout for this recording as well as the one we did with the SBA later today. Melanie, I'm now going to toss it over to you. Thank you so much for presenting. We really appreciate it and look forward to the information you're going to provide. Thank you so much, Alyssa. I'm really happy to be here today to share some crucial information for all of you to help you navigate the waters. Um, the waters are changing daily, it seems, um, if, if not even more frequently. So let's talk about some things that we can do to pivot right now. And also, they can help you in the future as well. So during this presentation, I'm going to be talking specifically about marketing, about partnerships, and about communications and then also how to prepare for your future growth and sales. So as Alyssa said, my name is Melanie Deal. I'm founder and CEO of Melanie & Co Marketing Collective. I'm also the chair, uh, the marketing chair at the BBB. So I'm very excited to be here today and share some information with you. Um, real quick, um, one, one housekeeping note, um, we do have the chat window open. And at the end of this presentation, I will answer as many questions as I possibly can. So go ahead throughout the presentation and drop, drop your questions in the chat window. So let's get started. Let's start with talking about marketing. It's important, it's crucial that we continue marketing throughout this time. Um, smart, savvy business owners know that this is going to end and we need to keep marketing and getting our message out there throughout this time. So let's talk about some different ways that we can be innovative and creative. Some things that we might be doing a little bit differently. The first thing that I wanna talk about is utilizing video. Video is going to be so important for all of us as business owners, as organizations, as solopreneurs, video is going to be key for us. We already know that Cisco has predicted that by 2021, which is knocking on the back door, 82% of all web traffic will be video. We're smart to jump on that bandwagon now, especially given our current events where people are at home, they're working remotely, people are hiding, staying safe at home and, and we need to be sure that we are sharing our information using video. Video does not have to be complicated or extensive. It can be as simple as pulling out your, your camera, excuse me, your, your smartphone, utilizing that, use the camera on your smartphone to take some video. Or if you want to do some desktop recordings, um, there are tools that you can use for that as well. So some of the tools that we like to use for recording video, especially recording desktop, Loom, L-O-O-M, is a tool that we use a lot for recording our desktop. There are other tools that you can use as well, but I like to recommend the tools that we use on a regular basis and that our clients use on a regular basis. So Loom is one of the tools that you can use if you're creating a tutorial and you have a presentation like a slideshow show or something along those lines where you would need to record your screen. Really great tool for you to use. If you need a webcam, I personally use the Logitech HD 1080p. I'll make sure that you have access to the res these resources at the end of this presentation. Again, the webcam I use is Logitech HD 1080p. I also use a, a, a self-standing, standalone um, microphone. I use the Blue Yeti. It's a really great one. These, these are tools that we use here and that our clients use as well. So these are really affordable tools. So if you don't have the, the best equipment that's built into your laptop or your desktop, which is why I have external equipment, it really makes for a clear audio and a clear video. So those could be used for creating a, additional video. We like to use Zoom as well as GoToWebinar for holding meetings and online meetings and tutorials as well. So creating video and utilizing video is going to be very, very effective for you. Create a YouTube channel. It's free for you to use. It's a great way to get your information in front of your audience. 
YouTube is free, like I said, it's part of Google, and it is the second largest search engine in the world. So, and I told you just a minute ago how video is king right now. So we really need to be jumping on that bandwagon and creating video. Let's talk about what kind of video you might create. Perhaps you are, one of my favorite examples is a handyman, a painter to be specific. Especially right now, people are stuck at home and they're working on things around the house. And I'm a perfect example of this. I was going to have someone come in and take care of some painting, interior painting. Well, that got put on the back burner. So my husband and I, DIYers that we are, uh, grabbed a can of paint and started working on the kitchen. Now, we're DIYers, we've painted before, we just didn't feel like doing it this time. What would have been really beneficial for us since it's been a while since we pulled out the paintbrush, was to have a video where someone, an expert, was showing us the proper way to apply the painter's tape so we don't get paint on the kitchen cabinets and the trim around the windows. If people are going to be doing these things at home anyway, imagine the kind of relationship that we can build with our audience when we're offering them, hey, you're gonna do it anyway, here's the best way that you can go about it. That's a great example of how someone could use video and reach their audience and stay in touch with them and build that relationship so that when this is over and you have to go, someone has to go in and clean up the mess that the homeowners made because they're not professional painters, they're going to turn to the ones who were helpful for them during their time of need. Another great way that business owners are using video right now, and you're probably hearing about this, is personal trainers, gyms, yogis they're going online they're creating videos so people can work out and practice at home another great way for you to think about how you can utilize video and get in front of your audience and stay in touch with them it's so important that we continue to create content and market to our audience we need to be getting visible everywhere everywhere that we can online um, through traditional mail whatever that looks like whatever marketing methods that you have been using in the past now's the time to increase that you've got a, maybe you have a little bit of extra time on your hands go ahead and start exploring some different avenues and thinking about how you can get visible everywhere Another thing that I like to encourage business owners to do is to utilize the LinkedIn challenge. Now, some of you probably don't know what the LinkedIn challenge is, and my mentor uh, actually termed or coined that term, the LinkedIn challenge, but basically it's, it's 10 days of intense LinkedIn connecting, messaging, polishing up your LinkedIn profile. You've got extra time on your hands right now. Why not leverage that? Everybody is going online. So get in front of your ideal audience and participate in the LinkedIn challenge. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to perform a, a, an advanced search on LinkedIn. It works very well if you have the paid version, but it's not required to have the paid or premium version of LinkedIn in order to do the LinkedIn challenge. Go there, search your audience, the people that you want to connect with that would be your ideal market. Connect, 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 connect. As many as you can in a day. If you could do 20 or 30 connections in a day, that would be phenomenal. And do that for several days. Polish up your LinkedIn profile. Make sure that everything is exactly like you want it to be. Maybe now's the time you've been putting it off for a while. Go ahead and take care of that. Polish that up. Then once you've got everything in place, I want you to start creating content on your LinkedIn profile. Write articles, create posts, share that with your audience. Start getting very, very visible. Start messaging your new connections and see if there's a way that you can actually make a connection that would benefit you down the road. Maybe you're going to create online resources. Maybe you're going to have membership sites or maybe you're going to offer online courses. Some of the online courses uh, platforms that I'm familiar with and have used and my clients have used, the one that we use here is Member Vault. And it's a really great resource, a really great tool. These are not free options for you, but they are very affordable. So if you need to pivot and turn your content online so you can still reach your audience and provide information to them, these are great resources for you. Member Vault's one, the one that we use here at Melanie & Co. We've also used Teachable. Some people use Thinkific or Thinkific, um, depending on how you say it. So those are other resources that are available for you as well. 
these are great ways that you could turn your business that might have been face to face and reach people online where they are right now. So those are some of the ways that you can be innovative and creative as far as your marketing message is concerned. I'd like to tell you a couple of stories. These are true stories. The first one is about an esthetician. She actually is my esthetician. And what she has done is um, they've all been shut down here, um, spas and salons and um, nail salons and everything. So she's not able to meet clients face to face. So what she's doing is she has turned to online skincare consultations. So she's got a form on her website. People can fill out the form, they can follow the prompts. And once she has received the information, they can schedule a private Zoom consultation or a meeting with her where she can give them their consult, she can make recommendations, and she can tell them the products that they need to do and the types of home care that they could start using in order to keep their skin healthy. She's offering online virtual facial parties. We're actually having one tonight. So she's distributed through the mail or through porch pickup. We were able to pick up product. And tonight we're gonna go online in a little private party and do a, a facial at home. Great way for us to connect, for her to connect with her audience and for us to connect so we don't feel so isolated. Awesome tools for her to use. She'll also be selling more product through her e-commerce site. What can you do in your business along those lines? How can you take something that you have provided, a service that you've provided, or a, or a product that you've provided face-to-face -face and turn that online? This is a great example, and I want you to start brainstorming ideas and ways that you can follow along these lines like the esthetician has. There's a, <coughs> excuse me, there's a photographer in California and I believe she's in San Diego. And she is actually doing photo shoots through the window. Photographers are really experiencing, especially event photographers and people in the wedding industry are experiencing a lot of hard hits right now. So how can we, how can they take that and turn it? How can they pivot their business and the service that they offer? This photographer who's doing photo shoots through the window is doing an amazing job. She was featured on the local news channel where she is getting a lot of visibility which is where it comes back to, as to how she can increase her business and be present and offer services in a new, unique, creative, innovative way. So I want you to start thinking about things that you can do as a business owner. What can you do that will take your marketing to the next level? Let's talk about partnerships. Developing strategic partnerships who, what, when, where, why, and how. If you took high school journalism, maybe those questions are familiar to you. Who can you partner with? Let's talk about that a little bit in depth. If you are, say, a farmer's market and you want to reach more people, right? How can you partner with someone? Who could you partner with? I have an example for you in just a minute I want to share with you. What could you do if you are another type of business, say you are a service provider? Let's go back to the painter. What can you do as a painter? To Who can you partner with? Maybe you could partner with the local paint store and you could offer classes, online classes, something like that for them. You could promote their product in your videos, okay? When can you do this? Where can you do it? You can do it online. You can do it in person too. Developing strategic partnerships is going to be key for you. So let's go back to the farmer's market for just a minute. Maybe what you can do is you are a videographer and or you are an online course creator. Then you could partner with your local uh, farmer's market and you could create videos with them telling people and showing people how they can preserve produce how they can can safely, how they can freeze safely, the types of products, the best way to do that. Start creating videos, partnering the, the videographer could partner with the local vendor, the produce supplier or the, the farmer's market. That would be a really awesome partnership. Start thinking about how you can do this as well. Why would you want to do this? Well, you're going to develop this partnership. It's going to have a long lasting relationship. So think about how you can develop those partnerships with someone else that's in a similar industry or that has a similar audience. Let's put it that way. So maybe if you reach the same audience, but you have messages that you can share back and forth with other people, how can you do that? 
If you are in the HR industry, maybe you would want to connect with someone who is a business coach and together you could share each other's information. You could start building up some of those videos that we talked about a few minutes ago. You could build up courses and you could self and cross promote each other's courses. There are lots of partnerships that you may have considered in the past and maybe now's the time to launch those partnerships. I want to talk to you about a couple of specific partnerships that I personally know of. So there is a handyman service. Now, right now, hardware stores are considered essential businesses. So hardware stores are still going to stay open, but people may not be willing to go out and pick up whatever it is that they need. If I were a handyman service, obviously I'm not going to be doing work inside of people's homes right now, but I could offer pickup and delivery service from the hardware store. If I'm a yoga studio, I could promote, during my yoga videos, I could promote the local health food store. So I love the idea of the yogi who is doing this. She is creating these videos and she's reaching her audience. So obviously people who practice yoga on a regular basis are probably pretty health conscious. So what she would do throughout her video is act sort of like an influencer, if you will, where she would be promoting the local health food store or promoting the local farmer's market. And maybe the local farmer's market is also partnering with the handyman service to deliver their products to the customers. The partnerships could actually grow and grow and build on each other. And before you know it, you've got a whole network of people who are promoting and cross promoting each other. What kind of partnerships can you develop in your business that will help you move the needle forward and extend your network and reach more people? Let's talk about communication. We're gonna spend a few minutes talking about communication. It's time to ramp up your messaging. If you haven't been using your social media or your email marketing or live stream video, now's the time. The best time to do it was before all of this started. The second best time is now. What are you going to do? It's We're not going to sleep, right? We're going to take this time when things are a little bit slower and really ramp up our messaging and ramp up our communication with our audience. So how do we do that? People want to know what's going on with our business. Who's still in business? Who's still available? How are we going to get that message across to our audience? It's really time. If you've been spending a little bit of time on your Facebook business page or your Facebook group, now's the time to get in there and really send that message out to your audience. Let them know, what are you currently offering? If you're closed, how long will you be closed? When do you expect to open? Of course, we don't know that, but we can reassure our audience that we are still in business. I just found out this morning that Google My Business, which is a very popular platform, They've, they've, they've kind of put a few uh, restrictions in place with your Google My Business platform, but one of the things that they just released, and I just got a notification of it this morning, is yesterday they announced the availability for us to put a temporary closed notification on our Google My Business listing. Let's go ahead and do that. If you are temporarily closed, go into your Google My Business dashboard and turn that notification on so people know that you are temporarily closed not fully closed. That's really great for people that are in the, the agritourism industry as well, but people that are in service-based industries, restaurants, um, salons, those sorts of uh, businesses, it's really important that we let people know that we're temporarily closed, but not forever. And then continue with our messaging. How are we going to communicate with people? I want you to think about what you're going to say on your Facebook page because people are going to be coming to your Facebook page and to find out what's going on with your business. If you are pivoting, which I, by watching this video, I assume you are pivoting. If you are pivoting, then you need to let them know exactly what you're doing. What are you offering? How are you going to continue to serve them? And even if you don't have a product or service to offer them during this short period of time, continue to stay in touch with them. Continue to message your people, put your message out there. You don't want people to forget about you while this is going on. So by continuing to keep your audience aware, that will benefit you in the long run. Create those social media posts. You can, you've got time now. Focus on a content calendar, which I've talked about many times, 
put your information together, schedule it to go out, monitor, start building relationships. If you've been ignoring your social media platforms for a while, you've got a little extra time on your hand. Go ahead and start building that audience, building and nurturing those relationships, telling people how they can communicate with you and support you during this time. One of the most beautiful things that I've seen going around on social media recently is a little meme that says, here's how you can support my small business. Maybe you can buy a gift card or a gift certificate to use down the line. Maybe you don't want to spend any money. Maybe you don't have extra money to spend right now. You can share our business page posts. You can share us on Twitter. You can share our com and comment on our, our content that we create on different social media platforms. Start leveraging your audience and your followers. They are your fans and followers because they love you already. So build up that relationship with your people. If you haven't started email marketing, now's the time. Again, people are online all the time and they're looking for information from you. So make sure that you're using your email marketing. Now, I want you to I want you to consider this as as a tip though. Do it within reason. So maybe you don't want to email them every day because a lot of people are experiencing inbox fatigue right now. Inbox fatigue means there's a lot of information coming through the inbox. A lot of businesses and organizations are sending out COVID-19 updates. So maybe it would behoove your business to send out one of those to your audience. But then after that, just maybe once a week or every other week, if that makes sense for your business, Share some information that's going to be helpful to your audience, not always about the pandemic, but maybe just something that's a little bit of a relief from the stress that people are experiencing right now. Start building relationships and nurturing relationships through your email marketing as well. If you haven't started, now's the time. If you have started, keep it up. Don't let it go. But put together a sequence that makes sense for your business, for your message, for your brand, and for your audience. Let's talk about live stream video. Okay, we've talked about video a little bit already, but I wanna talk a little bit more about live stream video and how it differs from video that you're going to create for your YouTube channel or for your Vimeo platform or for your online courses. Live stream video is really amazing. It's been, it's been very popular for the past couple of years and more and more platforms are opening them up. Uh, the option to live stream video to the users. Um, a lot of, some of us have access on LinkedIn. All of us have access on Facebook and I, Instagram, IG, as I call it. Uh, and some of us have that option is available on, on YouTube as well. Live stream video is really going to help us ramp up our messaging and reach our audience in a way that is unlike anything else. After so, after email marketing, live stream video is the next best way to reach your audience. Email marketing has a 90% deliverability rate. Live stream video has a 50% deliverability rate. Social media has just st static posts have about a four to 10% deliverability rate, meaning that's how much of your audience receives the message organically without being paid. Okay, live stream video is key for us as business owners. This is a really great opportunity for you to share some of those partnerships that you have created, to share about some of the other courses or the other resources that you have for your audience. Live stream video is a really great way for you to reach your audience. So what does that look like? One of the tips that I like to share with people when they're just getting started with live stream video, and you might be a little bit uncomfortable, is when you open up the app on your phone, I want you to go to create um, to, to create a post, and then I want you to click on go live, excuse me, I want you to change the audience settings to only me. Then you click the back button and then you go live and you can practice that way. You can go live without it being public to everyone in your network and you can practice that way. So you can see if you need 
to move where the lighting is a little bit better or if maybe you need a tripod because your hands are too shaky because you're nervous it's okay everyone's a little bit nervous the first time they start this but people are a lot more receptive today the trend with videos today is something that's not as polished and highly produced people really want to be with other people especially the business owners and the companies and the brands that they follow they really want to be with them live and in the moment and when we create live stream video it's very engaging so live stream video can be a little bit longer than recorded video because people like to be in in the room with you as I say where they can comment and ask questions and have a dialogue with you social media is a dialogue not a monologue it's not just one person or one brand out there saying here's why we're so wonderful and here's why you should buy our stuff it's about building relationships and, and about having a, a conversation with people. So using live stream video enables us to do that in a very special way. So you can reach much more of your audience than with a standard social media post, and you can create engaging content. The content that we want to continue to create throughout this whole pandemic is content that is helpful, informational, educational, engaging, entertaining, maybe even emotional. That's the kind of content that your audience is going to relate to. And that's the kind of content that they are going to engage with. And they are going to share that with their audience as well. Um, I don't know if you've noticed it, you probably have because I think everyone's noticed it. The memes across Facebook are just crazy right now. People are really trying to take some of the stress out of what we're all feeling and give a little bit of light and joy and laughter to our audience. And if there's a way that you can do that, that fits with your brand and your message, I encourage you to do that. Some ways that you can create some of this content, one of the tools that we like to use for creating image graphics is a free tool called Canva, C-A-N-V-A canva.com it's a free tool for you to use and you can create some of your own memes and engaging content and i'm going to show you one at the end of this presentation as well that was it was taken from a meme that i found that was created through canva so i want you to think about how you can really really ramp up your messaging right now now is the time for your voice to be heard people want to know what's going on with your business Some stories, I always have stories. So how some local business owners or smaller business owners are using their messaging and ramping up their messaging. So a home security company has increased their email communication to let people know that they are there, that they will continue to be there. Maybe since there's so many people working from home now, they, they probably are seeing an increase in requests because people want to make sure that their homes are safe. How do they manage their home security systems? How do they manage their smart homes during all of this, right? They're live streaming regular updates to their audience as well, showing how to navigate the systems and what to do in times of, of stress. So they can um, really get their message across with their audience that way. There's an auto repair shop that I'm working with and they're publishing how to video for people that may not want to drive to the auto repair shop to change their oil. Well, maybe you want to stay at home and change your oil. This is how you do it. So they're creating how to videos. They're building relationships. If people are going to change their oil at home anyway, they might as well get expert advice on how to do that. And then that when people are back and life is back to normal and people are back to bringing their car to the auto shop to get their oil change, they'll remember about this auto shop that showed them how to do it at home. And maybe they will get a new client from that. They've also increased their social media presence as well by creating updates on a regular basis, letting them know how to deal with people that do have to bring their car to the shop and how they can be safe in doing so. So those are some ideas that local small business owners are actually truly employing right now. These are things that you can do as well. Take these ideas and turn them into real actionable, practical, tangible steps that you can take to get your messaging across to your audience. Let's talk about growth and sales. So when this is all over, we, during this time, 
we need to be preparing for when this is all over, preparing for the future. We need to continue to build our brand awareness. How are we going to do that? By utilizing some of the tools that we've already talked about today. Maybe you need to update your website a little bit. Maybe it's time to fine tune all of your platforms everywhere online. Maybe it's time to incorporate some new, fresh ideas into your brand. This is the time to do this. Continue to explore new markets and opportunities. Where can you find people that you can develop partnerships and relationships with that will actually help you move the needle forward in your business? Maybe now's the time to learn new skills. Maybe you've got some time off and you think, I need to know a little bit more about how to create video. Learn some new skills. Maybe you've got a really cool camera, but you've never really taken advantage of it. There's tons of tutorials on YouTube and elsewhere online. There's courses that you can take. Learn some new skills. Put those skills to work in your business. Keep marketing. Don't be quiet. Keep marketing. Ramp it up. Get that messaging out there. And most importantly, continue to communicate with your staff or your employees because when this is all over, there is going, likely going to be a surge for most of us. Business is going to, people are going to be so happy to be out of their homes and back out where they can take advantage of what they have done before. There's going to be a surge. How are you going to be prepared for that? All of this marketing and communication that we're doing throughout this time period, whatever this looks like, whether it's a month or six weeks or two months, we don't know but you're going to be marketing, you're going to be ready. I want you to be prepared for that surge and the influx of business that you have when we actually get to the end of this. How will you continue to keep your staff and employees engaged throughout all of this? So there's ways that you can do it. It's going to look different for every business, but I want you to start thinking about that as well. I found this quote and I thought it was really it was really impactful. If you can't deliver a product, deliver an experience. And that's what we're going to be doing during this time. When we are pivoting through this pandemic, we're going to be delivering an experience, even if we can't deliver a product to our customers and clients. And this was from Dr. Amy Acton, a friend of mine found this in Ohio. Life is not shutting us down right now. Life is waking us up. I see a future that is brighter than we have ever known. We will all get through this together. It's going, we're navigating some new waters. We're having to pivot and make some changes. But this 30 minutes that I have shared with you today have given you lots of ways and ideas that you can incorporate into your business during this time and come out brighter and bigger and larger and happier on the other side. Thank you so much. I'm going to open up the chat window now and see what kind of questions that you might have that I can respond to. Okay, Melanie, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, I will begin to start asking you those questions so you can answer them for our attendees. Thank you. Um, the first one that we have is, I typically don't get on video. Do you have any tips for being on camera? Yes, I do have some tips for being on camera. That's beautiful. So. I gave you the suggestion on how to go live on Facebook. Um, some of the other things that you need to think about when you are going on video, um, make sure that you've got a pretty clean backdrop behind you. I have the screen behind me that you can see right now. So this is what I like to use. I also have a ring light in my, um, in my office and lighting is going to be key. That's going to be your number one thing that you need to consider is having good lighting. So I've got a ring light in here. I've got all the lights on. I've got all the windows, excuse me, the, the blinds raised and the windows open, the curtains open so I can get lots of natural light and I also add some good lighting with the ring light as well um, having the good um, equipment like the camcorder excuse me camcorder how old am I the webcam and having a good microphone is also going to be um, key as far as being successful as well so another question that kind of jumped uh, piggybacks off of the one um, that was first asked said can you repeat how we practice um, going live Yes. Okay. If you want to pull out your camera and follow along, I will, I will step by step guide you exactly how to do that. So the first thing, of course, you're going to do is open your Facebook app. Then you're going to create a post and you're going to choose go live. 
At the top of it, it well, it's, I use an Android, it might be different on an iPhone. At the top of that, there is a little drop down box that says public, okay? Next, I want you to click on that and I want you to click, it has settings, public, friends, friends accept, and then you click see more, then you choose only me. Then you go back and you create the live video. Click start video, I'm gonna start my video. This is a test. Oh, it has to be at least four seconds long. Okay, so I didn't go long enough. Now I should be long enough. Okay, now the live stream video is there. It's only me. If I am pleased, oh, and there it is, sorry. Um, if I'm pleased with the results of that particular video, then I can go back to that post and change the setting to public. Now that does on, that only works on your personal profile. It doesn't work that way on your business page. On your business page, it's automatically going to be public because a Facebook business page is by default public. You can't change the settings on it to be mm -hmm. private. But that will give you some practice on how to <coughs> how to get started. And then once you feel comfortable, you know where to hold the phone, you know where the lighting is, then you can go live on your business page. Okay, great. Another question that we have um, also pertaining to going live, it says, how often should I go live? How often should you go live? Great question. If you can go live a minimum of once a week, that's awesome. I encourage business owners to go live a couple of times a week, but if once a week works for you right now, you probably have a little extra time, so you could probably go twice a week. Um, the, the beauty about this is it's such an engaging content that we can that we can create on the on the Facebook platform that that has actually cumulative effects or more of a compound effect, if you will. So we get in front of more eyeballs the more we when we do Facebook live stream, first of all, we're reaching about 50% of our audience. So if we continue to do that on a regular basis, we're going to continue to reach more audience and become more visible. So minimum of once a week. Okay, perfect. That's great advice. Um, another question that we have says, I'm not very video savvy. Do I need to be able to edit any video? Do you have any tips for that? I guess that's obviously not going live, but just kind of putting out a video out there. Right. It's Okay, so my least favorite answer is it depends. So depending on the type of content that you're creating, you might need to edit it. And there are editing tools available. If you just need to trim a little bit off the beginning and the end of it, you can actually do that in the YouTube platform itself where you can trim. There are other tools that you can use if you need to edit. Um, I am not a video editor. I have team and they take care of that for me. Uh, but if it's just trimming, it's something that you, it's easy to do yourself. There are other online tools that you can use that might be available for you. I can't think of the name of the one that is very popular right now, um, but I will make sure that I get that information to you. Um, but as far as, so if you need some serious editing, you might want to hire a professional to do that for you. Okay, another question that we have says, you mentioned Zoom and GoToWebinar, um, but I've heard of Zoom the most. What are the costs associated with that? Okay, so Zoom is one that I use extensively at my business, and there is a free version of Zoom. There are limitations, of course, with anything that's free, there's limitations, right? The free version of Zoom allows you to be have a meeting that lasts up to 40 minutes, and I believe you are limited. I don't know exactly how many you're limited to in your meeting. I think it might be two or three people. So if you need to have more than two or three people at your meeting, or you need to go longer than 40 minutes, you would probably want to bump up to the paid version. The lowest paid version is $15 a month, so it's very affordable. You get up to 100 people in a meeting, and you can go as long as you want. You could go up to eight hours on a Zoom meeting if you needed to do so for $15 a month. Um, so those are the two uh, paid, and also with the paid version of Zoom on the $15, you can actually stream live to Facebook through that, to a Facebook group, a page, a profile. You can also stream live on YouTube if you wanted to. So that might be a really great way for you to reach more people as well. So you could have people in the meeting room and also stream live to your social media platforms or YouTube. So another question we have is, I'm having a lot of trouble with bandwidth. Can you address um, anything that can help with that? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't help with bandwidth. Um, I think 
that's something that we're all dealing with right now um, because everybody's home trying to work from their internet. I would recommend that you connect with your internet service provider um, or your IT people. Um, if you are working remotely, if you've been working in an office and you're now working remote, you probably have IT people that could maybe help you sort that out, but I am not an expert in that area, so. Okay. Um, another question that we have says, you've shared a lot of great ideas, but sometimes it can be overwhelming of where to start. If you had to recommend one thing of where I should pivot first, what should it, what would it be? Marketing, partnerships, what would you suggest? Messaging. Messaging is the first thing that I would recommend. Keep in front of your audience, the people that already know you, the people that already trust you, the people that already like you, keep in front of them. Met communication is, is key right now. And I think that's going to provide the biggest benefit for you. Okay, um, we do have a question specifically on partnerships that says, how do you recommend we reach out if we don't have a relationship already established? Okay, great question. So if you know who it is that you want to partner with, and then may, what I would do is I would go to LinkedIn, first of all, and I would find this person on LinkedIn, and I would see if we had anyone in common. And if we do have someone in common, then I would ask for that person to make a, a connection with us or make an introduction for us on our behalf so they can connect us. So that's the first thing I would do is reach out to them on LinkedIn. If, you, if you're not quite sure who that person is, then you need to do a little bit of market research. Check with your existing audience and see if there's a specific industry that you want to get involved with. Let's go back to the yoga instructor. So if you are a yoga instructor and you know that you want to connect with someone that provides, say, elderberry syrup, that's very much a, a woo type um, healthy product that many people who practice yoga also use. So maybe you say, I know that I want to connect with this person who makes elderberry syrup, but I don't know who that is. Ask your audience if there's a particular elderberry syrup that they service provider that they already use or can recommend. Tap into your existing network, see who they're using, then do a little bit of research and make sure that you're making the connection with the partnership with the right person, the right fit for your business. Um, and that's that's probably how I would start was tap into your existing network and see if they can make some recommendations or referrals for you. Okay, great. That's a, that's a really great suggestion. Um, another question that we have says, what do I do if no one engages with me on a live video? <laughs> uh, just keep talking. <laughs> that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, so talk as long as, it, as you need to talk in order to get your message across and then be done. So a, a really good example is we did a Ask Me Anything um, a while back, and we said, we, we told our network we would be there for from 7.30 to 8.30 on a particular evening. And um, so we had people come in and they started at 7.30, they asked all their questions, and by eight o'clock they were done. So we didn't stay online just because we said we were going to be there from 7.30 to 8.30, people were done asking questions, so we quit. So the, the point I'm making is, when you say you're going to go live and you've got something to share with your audience, don't stay on there just because you feel like you need to stay longer just because no one is responding to you. Some of, sometimes there can be a delay in what we're seeing and what is actually happening, especially when we were talking about bandwidth a minute ago. Sometimes there can be a delay and somebody may have already actually asked a question or made a comment and we don't actually see it in real time. What you can do is go back after the fact and answer their question. Make sure that you've got that that live that stays there, it will stay on your timeline as a video. People can watch it on the replay so they can still have access to that information. In order to get that engaging content, make sure that you're asking them questions. Hey, have you ever experienced fill in the blank? Let them say yes or no. When you experienced yes or no, what? how did that make you feel? Ask them questions that re re they require more than a one word response. When we start creating that engaging content where people are actually having a conversation with us, it sends a signal to the algorithm that this is really important information. So the algorithm, the machines, the automation back there, will just kind of show it to a few more people, if you will. So that's how it builds that audience. 
So I encourage you to create content that your audience is craving, ask them questions. And if nobody shows up during your live, that's okay. Pretend like you didn't expect anyone to show up and just go on about your business. It happens to all of us and it's okay. Don't let that stop you from going again in the future. Okay, awesome. Um, another question that we have says, what was the free graphic design website that you mentioned earlier? Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. And would you, you know, suggest or would you say that it's easier and very user friendly for maybe someone that has zero experience with graphic design? Exactly. It's perfect for graphic designer wannabes. Um, it's drag and drop. It's got templates and stock images that are already in there. You can change the colors out. It's super easy. They have their own tutorials. They've got a YouTube channel that shows you how to do things. There are courses that you can take on Canva if you want to buy a course, but this is a time to learn, right? So you can maybe buy an online course to learn how to use Canva. It is very, very, very easy for beginners to use. There are, there are templates that are built in there that all you would have to do is just, you could keep everything the same and just change up the wording so the text is, is um, unique for you. Okay, I have two more questions right now in the question box. If, you know, for anybody that's on currently, if you have questions, continue to, um, you know, put them in there and we'll be sure to get them answered. But for one right now, I said, or uh, they said, um, for emails, how much is too much? How much is too much? Great question. How much is too much? Um, it's going to be based on the messaging that you have to share with your audience. Right now, I wouldn't email more than once a week unless you have really urgent information that you have to send to your audience. The least, the minimum that you want to email your audience is once a month because a colleague of mine in Texas, she refers to it as the pageant wave in the inbox. So we're just still, it's, keep, it's about keeping visible and letting our audience know that we're still there. Daily is probably too much at this point in time, unless you just have really urgent information that you have to send on a daily basis. Um, weekly is probably good. I would probably stick with once a week or even every other week for right now. Okay, great. Um, and the last question that we have is, you mentioned some membership sites. Can you go in depth um, on what you recommend for those? Right, my favorite membership site to use is Member Vault. It's very easy to upload videos, PDFs, checklists. You can create membership, people can log in, you can have freebies there if you want to. So if you have some free information that you want to share with your audience, that's a great way to get them there and bring them into your funnel so you can continue. Because what happens is when people sign up for that information, they have to give you your email, give you their email address. So now you can market to them through your email marketing member vault is my favorite tool to use. It runs about $39 a month. So if you have a course that sells for $97, it's obviously paid with just one sale a month. And the rest of that is money in your pocket. Member Vault is the one that we that we prefer. We've also used um, Teachable, and that is a very easy platform to use, and Thinkific. I prefer the Member Vault platform. I just find it a little bit easier to use, and there's less fees involved. Uh, for the payment processing. Um, there's also, if you have a WordPress site, there are plugins that you can download to your WordPress site and host your course on your site. Now, that is a little bit more involved. You might need to hire a web developer to help you with that. There is a lot more work as far as the design of that is concerned as well. So um, right now I'm in favor of some of these third-party tools like Member Vault. Um, but there's tons of membership sites out there that you could look into. That just happens to be the one that we prefer right now. Okay, great. Well, Melanie, that's all the questions that we have. Um, you know, thank you so much for your presentation and information. It's just incredibly helpful for all business owners during unprecedented times like this. Um, for some housekeeping, you know, as I said earlier, please check bbbevents.org to see all the other webinars that we're hosting in the coming weeks. And we do have every single one of these webinars recorded and we'll be sure to send you that recording so you're able to access this information, um, you know, even beyond this webinar. If you have any questions for BBB, you can email me directly. My name is Alyssa Parker. I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning, so I apologize about that. But my email is aparker at raleigh.bbb.org. Um, and we also hope that you're utilizing our bbbshoplocal.org website. This is something that we just created, and we actually emailed out some information regarding it last week. 
Um, it, it's a campaign that we created for so that consumers can support you and your business at a safe distance. We're asking for updated information. Like I said, we we sent out a form last week. Um, if not, we'll be sending out that link again so you can fill that out. We're creating um, a really, really helpful site that, that hopefully can drive consumers to your business. So, you know, make sure you check that out. It's bbbshoplocal.org and be on the lookout for more information of how you can get your business information up there. Um, thank you so much for attending today. And, you know, we at BBB look forward to continue to try to support you through these trying times and, um, you know, feel free to reach out how we can help and be on the lookout for, for stuff in your inbox. Thank you so much and have a great day.